Hey YouTube, Sam Little here, aka Lord Raven 2000, and I thought it'd be pretty cool if I gave you guys a rundown of my version of the Watt Hunter deck. It's a little bit different than what people are used to seeing, but it's really, really effective. Uh, I've won quite a few games with this, especially on Dev Pro. So let's go ahead and do a breakdown of the monsters. I'm running two Thunder Seahorses. This card's great, lets me toss it in the graveyard, grab two cards from my deck. It makes easy access to the Hunter engine, or if I just need a Watt to go in for direct attacks. So it's super cool card to have. Two Vylon Prisms. This is our level 4 tuner. We're going to be using this card to pull out our Synchros from our extra deck. And this deck really relies heavy on utilizing that extra deck. Three Paw Hunter. Paw Hunter is going to allow us to get an extra normal summon each turn which is basically going to allow us to fill the field full of monsters to go into our special summons. I also run three Maw Hunters. Same deal. Cool part about these cards, Maw can bring out Paw, Paw can bring out Maw, and so on and so forth. So it's really easy to go into an XYZ summon with this deck. Now let's go into the Watts. Watt Giraffe, kind of the, the, big, the big deal boss monster for the usual Watt deck. Watt Giraffe's 1,200 points of direct damage. So no matter what monster your opponent has, you're going to be able to shoot over that. But what really makes Giraffe effective is you're going to be able, once you make that direct attack, your opponent cannot activate spells or traps for the rest of the turn. And most people, if they're sitting on a Mirror Force, or, or not a Mirror Force, but they're sitting on a Magic Cylinder or a D-Prison, they're not going to activate that on a 1,200 hit point monster. So if you've got Thought Ruler on the field or another one of our big, big hitters, they're not going to activate that spell or trap on Giraffe, but once you hit with Giraffe, they can activate it. So it's it's really good for, for kind of neutralizing your opponent's back row. Three, Cobra. Cobra does 1,000 points of direct damage, which is cool in itself, but it also allows us to go through a deck, pick out a Watt monster, and add it to our hand. So it's good for getting the Giraffe in our hands, or if we need to get over a, an opponent's XYZ monster, we can pull Watt Pheasant. And our last Watt is Watt Pheasant. Kind of underutilized anymore, but I think it's it's one of the better cards. It's a thousand points of direct damage, but what really makes it cool is if your opponent's sitting on a Big Eye or a Silent Honor Arc or another XYZ card, this card, once you make a direct attack, you can temporarily banish into the end phase any, any face-up monster on the field. So you banish their XYZ card. When it comes back, its material is gone. The material does not come back with it. I also use it if I'm sitting on Paw Hunter and Maw Hunter as my attacking monsters. I go ahead and play this, knock out their boss monster that's on the on the board that I can't hit over, take it out of the play, and go ahead and go in for attacks with my smaller attack monsters. So it's real good for this deck. And last, being a light-based deck, Honest. Honest can be a game winner. Uh, it's a very good card to surprise an opponent with. Uh, this deck's not real big on spells. I run one Regeki, kind of take out my opponent's monsters without penalizing myself like Dark Hole does. Uh, two MST, obviously pop the back row, which in this format now, the back row's not becoming as big a threat as it used to be, so these are kind of playable, you know, take them out, put them in. Two Recycling Batteries. Recycling Batteries lets me pull two of my monsters back from the graveyard put them in my hand. This is good to put Thunder Seahorse back in my hand so I can utilize its effect again to go through my deck, grab two more monsters. It's also really good to put, put the Watts back in my hand because with their light hits, they're going, to get, they're going to get put in the grave quite a bit. So it allows you to bring them back, kind of protect them a little bit. I like to play a real trap-heavy style of play, so my traps, I do run quite a few. One bottomless trap hole for obvious reasons. I run three Luminize. This is a really cool card in a light deck. Someone makes an attack on me, I use Luminize, negates the attack, and takes their attacking damage, puts it on a light monster of my choice. They attack me with 3,000, I negate it, stick that 3,000 on a Watt Giraffe. My next turn, that those points stay on my monster into the, my next end phase. My next turn, I'm hitting for 40, well, 4,200 points of damage directly. So it, it can be a serious game winner. Change the face of a duel real quick. To Mirror Force for obvious reasons. I run two D-Prisons. 
And while most people have stopped using Dark Bribe and kind of gone into Wiretap and other alternative cards, I still run two Dark Bribe. Kind of just traditionalist, I guess. I run three Solar Ray. Each light monster that's on my field, face-up light monster, I'm going to be able to do 600 points of damage to my opponent. And with the summoning ability of this particular deck, that could be 3,000 points of damage every time I flip one of these. I run my personal favorite card, three Magic Cylinder. Cylinder is a game winner for me. I've won numerous duels using this card, so it's, it's really useful. And I run two... Call of the Haunted. This way, if someone puts one of my, <coughs> excuse me, puts one of my special summons in the grave, I can pull it back. All right, now let's check out my extra deck. My extra deck's a little light compared to what a lot of people run, but uh, I run one Stellar Omega, and this card allows me to activate it, and my opponent can't use spell or trap cards against the attack of this card. So I'm doing 2,400 points of damage that they can't stop with a spell or trap. Two, number 44, Sky Pegasus. Sky Pegasus is cool. Force your opponent to pay 1,000 life points or ditch one of their monsters. So it's real, real useful in this deck. Uh, one, Scrap Dragon. Scrap Dragon is great to pop back row, get rid of pesky field spell cards. I run one Star Leech, Paladinamo. This is great for if your opponent's got their boss card on the field and you need to get it down. This card will take that card down to zero. But another cool thing is if they do manage to defeat this card, you get a draw card. So it's got two attributes that make it real useful. Two, Stardust Dragons, kind of a staple. This card is going to protect against Dark Ho, uh, Regeki, cards like that. Two, Black Ships, helps me get rid of cards, monster cards on the field, and go in for attacks with my lighter hit monsters. Two Utopia, number 39s. Utopia basically a style card, negates a hit, so it's very useful. And then my boss card, I run two Thought Ruler Archfiend. In a lot of the traditional Watt decks, you run Watt Sign, which is going to allow you to keep replenishing your life. Well, we don't run that in this deck, so we use Thought Ruler. Every time Thought Ruler defeats an opponent's monster, you take that opponent's at that monster's attack put it in your life points. So it's really cool to keep your life boosted so you don't go out of the duel too quick. And another attribute is if someone activates a spell or a trap that targets this one card, you know, one psychic card, which Thought Ruler is, you negate it. You pay a thousand life points and negate it. So we kind of got our extra decks built to take on every situation. So there you have it, guys. There's my variation of the Watt Hunter deck. I like to call it Watt's Hunter the Stairs. Uh, leave some feedback. Let me know what you guys think, and I hope you all enjoyed.